Okay, we're going to learn how to complete the square. We're going to use this to solve quadratic equations. Okay, before we get started with completing the square, I'm going to show you what a perfect square trinomial looks like. That would be when the two factors are identical, like these two. And if you do first, outer, inner, last, you end up with x squared plus 10x plus 25. It's called a perfect square trinomial. And what we used here to get it was FOIL. So x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25. And these two give you together the 10x right here. So this is important when we complete the square because they're going to give us trinomials that are not complete. We have to figure out what the back number is going to be in the trinomial. And so I'm going to show you some problems that are going to look like the problems on your worksheet. So if we have x squared plus 16x plus question mark, I think on the worksheet they use a C. Uh, what you're going to do is ask yourself this question. Look at this number here. You're going to take 16, divide it by 2, and then square it. Let me show you how that pattern works. Look back up here at this problem. Take 10 and divide it by 2. It equals 5. If you square it, you get 25. And so that's how this pattern works. So this answer would be x squared plus 16x plus 64. Always show your work on these problems. It will help you later whenever we go through the whole completing the square problem for solving uh, to show your work. So this would be x squared plus 16x plus 64. One more thing I want to mention is if you factored this, you would get x plus 8 squared. And I want you to notice right here there's an 8. And so there's a pattern going on with these. So I want you to pay attention to the pattern a lot. So let's do one more of these, x squared minus 12x plus question mark. And like I said, the worksheet will have a C there. So what we're going to do is look at the 12. Now this time it's a negative 12. You're going to divide it by 2 and then square. So remember you're doing two things. Divide by 2, the answer gets squared. So the C equals 36. So the trinomial is minus 12x plus 36. If you factored it, it would be x minus 6. And look at that right here. There's the minus 6 in both of those. So on the worksheet, you're finding your c, but I'd also like for you to factor it back to the two factors that are identical. Okay, now the next part of section 5, 5, is they're going to give us a trinomial that already has a number in the back, but it's not a perfect square. So we're going to complete the square even though they give us a trinomial that's not a perfect square. And the very first step you do is whatever number's sitting here, you move it over to the other side. So in order to do that, you would add 16. So it shows up over there, but you're going to have to get in the habit right here of leaving an open spot because you're going to complete the square on this side, and so make sure you scoot that down and leave that open. Okay, just like we were doing on the worksheet, your eyes need to go right here and look at that 6. So take the 6, divide it by 2, and then square it, and you get 9. What we're going to do is you're going to put plus 9 right here. But because this is an equal sign, if you plus 9 on this side, you have to plus 9 on that side. So clean this up. They always want you to do this right here. They want you to factor that. And then usually this is just some math. You need to add that up or subtract whatever you need to do. And so look how that looks. Wow, that's x plus 3. Remember the scrap work? Right there's the 3. So x plus 3 squared. The other side's 25. We want to solve for x, so what we're going to do first is take the square root of both sides. And you remember doing that the other day in section 5, 4? When we want to get x squared back to x, you just square root, but you have to do both sides. You know that's turned into 5. What happens here is this and this cancel. 
and you're left with just x plus 3. So it really starts developing really quick here. And then after that, you want to subtract 3 on both sides. And you'll have your x equals negative 3 plus or minus 5. Now, this is not finished at this level. There are two answers for this problem. What you do is you take negative 3 plus 5. That gives you a positive 2. Then you take negative 3 minus 5, and you get negative 8. These are the two solutions. Now, you could check by graphing. Remember the original problem. If you put this right here in the graphing calculator, you're going to see it's crossing at negative 8 and positive 2. This is a process of completing the square. It's a new method for solving quadratics. Um, I'm going to show you another one that doesn't turn out maybe quite as pretty answers as this one. So here we are. x squared plus 4x plus 6. This is not a perfect square trinomial, so we need to take this to the other side. And we're going to get minus 6 over here. Remember to leave the space. And now we're going to go do our scrap work with the 4. 4 needs to be divided by 2 and then square whatever that answer is. So that means we're going to add 4 here and 4 here. And this factors back into x plus 2. Remember there's that 2. That's how we know that goes there. And this is negative 2. We want just an x, so square root both sides. Plus or minus. And here's where we remember from section 5, 4. This is imaginary. So the i goes here. And then you need to subtract 2 on both sides. So here's how you write this answer. Negative 2 plus or minus i on the square root of 2. This is finished. These are not like terms. You just leave it like this. Two answers. See this? Remember what this parabola would look like. If you graphed it, if you graph out the original problem right here, if you graph it out, it will not be crossing the x-axis. So will not cross. And so that would verify that this has an imaginary answer. Okay, one more. This one has uh, the beginnings of what kind of looks like it might be a perfect square, but we have this number already here on this other side. Uh, so what I want you to do is to go ahead, let's just go ahead and start it off back at zero on this side. So I'll subtract 27. So this is negative 2. And then I'm going to bring this back to the other side, x squared minus 10x, leave space, put a 2 there. Go take your negative 10, divide it by 2, and then square it. So we're going to add 25 here, 25 here, and looks like we're back to where we started from here. So I'm going to clean up that side. Factor. This one needs a little bit of simplifying because that 27 has a perfect square of 9 in it. So I'm actually going to have to take square root of 9 comes out of 3. And then there's a 3 left over. Add the 5. And so there's your two answers. These cannot be put back together. They're decimal answers. What you could do is actually figure out what the decimals are. If you can use your calculator, use the, you know, do 5 plus 3 on the square root of 3, find out what that decimal is. 5 minus 3 on the square root, find out what that decimal is, then go graph it, and then you can verify that that is the correct answer.